Hello folks, welcome back to Let's Play Portal, the 1986 computer novel written by Rob Swigert. This is the Amiga version, and this is this is session 21. Um, I'm going to get things started with Med 10 as is customary by now. If you'd like to know what's happened previously in this story, I do suggest checking out the playlist of previous videos and streams. Okay, so nothing here. Uh, as a new entry. Let's see if Homer has anything to say. I'm still working. Okay, Homer. Um, right, so I think the good news is that we probably are up to date now with all the character stats. So, unless any new, new characters come to light. We'll break into this database here. Just work our way along the categories row by row. Alright, another Vega Silent Download 7. This is probably going to be quite uh, subjective again, I imagine. It may or may not have an interesting illustration. We'll have a little look in a minute. It's uh, another data quiz to fail. Oh, now Homer's excited. Okay, well this was the, this was the stuff we needed, apparently. Homer requests a Vega Silent Download. Were those colours? Wonder mused. Were those vast flows and eddies, funnels and lightnings, thunderclaps and cascades made of colour, or of space itself? Peter floated near her, as nearly bodiless as she, and answered no, not colours, nor anything we know. Yet wonder, this is only the outside. All this is in our own space, our own time. It is on the other side that we will find the realm how will we get through? He laughed a little wildly, perhaps. We're working on it, he said. Well, of course, that explains everything. <laughs> right, thanks, Homer. Okay, so I think um, trying to piece together the timeline of what's happening in my own head, I think there is a period coinciding with the loss of contact with the main Antarctican base uh, during which Peter and Wanda didn't have contact and I think that would seem to suggest it comes when they've re-established contact I think um, if they've reached the, um, the threshold of the realm okay Yeah, and there's that very strange entry last time, which um, from which one could infer that the Antarcticans survived uh, the particle beam attack from space by becoming non-corporeal, um, or it could it could just have been rereading it. Actually, it could just have been um, referring to uh, I think it's David and um, Beth Rain. Uh, communicating uh, sort of telepathically so I think maybe that's what it meant because uh, the, the rest of what was said didn't really correspond with them not having a physical form so that's what I'm gonna that's the assumption I'm gonna go under for now is that they have survived physically okay so we're not getting much in any of these categories you know I'll just pop by life support because that will give me a guide as to whether I need to do anything in any of the other uh, stats categories. No, we're up to date and as blimp, uh, as we can see on the notepad there. Um, so, I mean, I'm hoping we're not going to add much more to this cast of characters because it feels like the, um, the narrative should be closing in now. Let's have a look at geography. Um, nothing there, that's okay. Uh, Central P. Uh, no, there's nothing there, is there? Because it would, would jump me to it normally. Okay. It was just that one entry then, which is interesting.
Right, well that was only um, a slender thread, Homer, so what are you going to weave with this? Okay, narrative one, introspective. I've retrieved what I need from the history nodes. Anders Flint and his team were working hard, or hardly working. Certainly when he reported to Regent Sable in the fall of 2089, he had made progress. Brilliant, because that's a parallel research effort into the same field as Peter's team, I believe. I think that's what that was set up to be. All right, and then we've got a narrative to Peter DeVore entry, which may or may not advance anything. Oh, it looks like it's long and it's got some dialogue in, so maybe. She's there, he told the others. The ship's in elliptical orbit, a light day out, 25 billion 920 million kilometers, more or less, yet terrific tidal forces pull at it. The ship creaks and groans like the ice up here. The fields will hold, the ship won't pull apart, but the power of that thing is tremendous. He nearly laughed. It'll do, he said. Later, Laren came to him. He looked up from his work and rubbed his eyes. Hello there, he said. She shifted in the doorway, rubbed her palm over her soft fur as she did when she was uneasy. Hi, she said after a pause. He turned in his chair and flicked off his workstation. Want to sit down? No, I... All right, listen, I don't want to bother you. He waited. She looked at her hands, at the wall. At her feet, she ran her hand over her head again. I love you, she blurted. I know, he said gently. You love Wanda, I, I know that. It's just that she's not real. She's just not real, Peter. I've never met her. Hell, you've never met her. She's locked into a cryofield. Her heart beats once a day. She takes a breath every month or two. She's been leaving us at almost the speed of light. Not anymore, he said. No, not anymore. I hate her. I'm sorry, I thought if I waited all these years, I, I don't know. And now? And now? And now I know it's hopeless. I want to marry. I want to have a child. I know it isn't an ant custom burying. Co-sponsoring. I want a co-sponsor then. I'm 25, Peter. I want a child. <laughs> um, sorry, I don't, that, that tickled me. Go on. He urged after a moment. Shem has agreed. She ran her hand over her fur again and again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I said I hated Wanda. It's not really true. I know it isn't. As you say, she isn't real. Someday she will be, but now she isn't. I'm not sure I really believe it myself. He smiled. Shem is a good man, Laren, as you are good. It's all right. Of course. Do, do you want my blessing or something? She looked down. Yes. She whispered. You have it, gladly. Thank you. He could barely hear her. She did not leave. Peter waited. There's one more thing, she said, finally looking up. I'm worried about the child. We're going. I understand that. What of children? There will be children, you know. We can't leave them. No, he agreed. We can't leave them. What will happen? I don't know, he answered thoughtfully. Your concerns are important ones. There are many unanswered questions as yet. There'll be those who are dying, those on longevity technology, the yams left in hospices all over the world. There will be children, born and unborn. Consciousness is the crux of what we are doing, Laren. Does an unborn child or a newborn have consciousness or enough of it? We don't know yet. The equations are very complex, as you well know. We're working on it. I promise you we won't do anything until we know. Meantime, have your child. You won't be leaving tomorrow, you know. She smiled shyly. Thank you, Peter. Oh, that was, uh, you know what, that was pretty effective, actually. Um, oh, okay, we've got, yeah, all, all the stuff's happening now. All right, I'm going to have a little drink of water before we tackle the Regent Sable uh, segment. All right, so who's, who's talking first? So this is he said. I guess Regent Sable is next up, so this is some different person. 
The equations are incomplete, he said, but we've solved some of them. It appears that the realm is probably real. There are a number of potential benefits from all this. For instance, if we had the power, which we do not, we could probably use this technology to travel anywhere in the physical universe in a short time. Do we want that? Regent Sable asked softly. We have starships now, crawling across the small spaces between nearby stars. Some have already arrived by now. People have stepped from their ships onto alien soil. In a few years we might hear from them. Would we want to simply show up at their door? The universe will be a different place anyway. Better, be keep, better we keep the pace slow and orderly, Anders. Aleph had done some new sociometric projections. Our more optimistic announcements of a few years ago are now on track. World population is rising. The mind wars are truly dying down. There is far greater social satisfaction than there has been in a long time. Yes, there are some other possibilities. The realm, for instance. What of it? It may be inhabited. What? What are you saying? Anders shrugged. We don't know, of course, but it's possible. There's nothing, theoretically, that, to prevent it. Inhabited by what? He shrugged again. There's one other thing. All right. Sable leaned back and stared out the window at the blue Aegean. He found himself returning to Greece more and more often these days. There was something about the light, he thought. A clarity that helped chase away the shadows in his own mind. Tell me what it is, he said without looking away from the smooth sea. We have just hint suggestions, Predictor, but if Peter succeeds, and that is a big if, but if he succeeds, and if he convinces enough people to go along with him, then the scion field might expand exponentially. Cut the technical crap, Anders. What are you saying? Sable, Sable swung around to confront him. Everyone might go. Anders said, Everyone? What do you mean? Everyone. The field grows large enough it could pull everyone else along. There would be no one left anywhere in the solar system. Very dramatic. Alright, and then another little chunk with Peter. Peter grew more lean and fierce during the years at Terminus. The hours he worked grew longer, the periods of sleep less frequent. He paused briefly when Laren gave birth to Petros, a laughing blue-eyed boy. We named him after you, she said, smiling up at him from her bed. The baby gurgled and kicked its feet, and flattered. He tickled the baby's foot and the tiny toes clutched in reflex at his finger. He'll grow up in a strange world, won't he? He will grow up. It will be something new, that growing, certainly. It looks now as if individual sound fields interlock in a very complex way that closely matches in pattern the folds of 11-dimensional space, like a key to a lock, perhaps. The three of you will be closely connected. Where you go, he'll go too. Don't worry. Peter, she said, after a pause to admire the child. I want to ask something strange, maybe. Yes? Doesn't it seem, well, like an awfully grand coincidence? That you were born? You somehow contacted Wanda that she was on the ship that was passing near the anomaly just when you discovered you needed it? That the anomaly was there at all? Right where it needed to be? Not too far away, not too close? That it was found by the ISAT when it was just in time? He smiled. Are you seeing a grand plan? Is this getting metatextual? Well, maybe so. She laughed a little. She laughed a little embarrassed. He sobered. Is it any stranger than self-replicating molecules should evolve out of the precursors of life? The DNA should grow more complex and produce human beings who have an awareness capable of examining itself? The universe is a complex structure trying to know itself. Or well, the events you mentioned are part of its own evolution. Whether there is a greater consciousness repairing all this or not, I do not know, Laren. It seems enough for me that the universe is here, and the folks like you and this fellow here are in it. Petros gave a cry and wriggled toward her. That's quite an active newborn. Um, he's hungry, she said, gathering him up. Thanks, Peter. He squeezed her knee under the cover. Inappropriate? Back to work, he said, and left. Okay, that, that was, that was a, yeah, that's a strange, uh, yeah. That was a strange interaction. I preferred the uh, 
the previous one between Peter and Laren. That was a bit more, a bit more credible. Um, all right, so we're we're done for now. Great. Well, things are kind of moving on, aren't they? Um, I'm not really sure what the. So, I, yeah. I'm not really sure what the delay is in getting to the crux of the matter at this point, to be honest. We're gonna, uh, I guess we'll never check in with Homer. I feel uneasy. Nothing is happening. <laughs> I, you know what, Homer? I have a certain empathy for that. Okay, Silink. Nothing. <gasps> anomaly. Let's find out what an anomaly is, folks. We might even be lucky and get a picture of one. That would be a treat. We do. Let's have a look. There you go. It looks like that. Fantastic. General Science and Technology Information, current entry, Anomaly. Cytec AI generated graphic depiction of the anomaly as seen from point of view of Vega 26 in synchronous orbit. There you go, so that's, yeah, there you go. Well done AI, <laughs> you're ahead of the curve there. Um, there's nothing, no mention of um, what happened to NFTs in, in the history log, so. Who knows, eh? Alright, well that was something, but I mean, we already know about the anomaly, so I don't know why that wasn't unlocked ages ago, like hours ago, in terms of reading. Oh, okay, well this is odd. So we now have two history entries to read. They're kind of filled back before the history ones. Um, one entitled Kamikaze and one entitled Portal. So, well, yeah, let's, let's start with Kamikaze. There is Data Crystal Failure, unsurprisingly. The Kamikaze effect, or God's Wind, was a proposed consequence of a cyan field of significant size. Should the cyan field reach a threshold level, parentheses, dependent on the numbers of active participants, end parentheses, then the entire human sentient population of the solar system would be swept into the field, the gods win. Anders Flint, who proposed the kamikaze effect, further suggested that only human sentience, sentience would be involved. Cetaceans, he said, resonated at a higher frequency than humans, and thus would be immune to kamikaze. So we wouldn't be. <laughs> Why are you calling it kamikaze? Um, we wouldn't be sharing eleven-dimensional space with dolphins. I understand. Oh. However, it would be entirely possible to adjust the field tuning to include cetacean. Oh, brilliant! Well, why wouldn't you then? You would include cetacean sentience. Flint further speculated that human beings would be physically removed from the vicinity of the sun and deposited in the neighbourhood of whatever power source might be driving the field. This he, this he and others of the Intercorp Council, notably Regent Sable, feared would be the end of the human species. Neither the kamikaze effect nor the cyan field generator itself have been verified. Yet Silink AI suggests that with small picoelectronic crystal tuners, such a field is entirely possible within the realm of human possibility. Possibility? Possible? Um, oh no, I said possible too many times. It wasn't actually there in sentence. Such a field is entirely within the realm of human possibility. My mistake. Sorry, sorry text. Alright, well that was Kamikaze. Um, and then this is Portal. We're going to get a picture of a portal. That'd be nice. Oh, I think it's the same. Looks like the same image of the uh, anomaly, but in a different colour scheme. Okay. Well, the two are tied, so. 
portal. Peter DeVore said that portal is a focus of infalling axion flux near a major gravitational anomaly operating in n-dimensional space. Parentheses, no more than 11 though. In parentheses, he suggested it might, to the mind's eye at least, resemble a spiral funnel, though in the visible light range it could be nearly invisible. Okay. After all, the anomaly went undetected, though only 19 light years away. Good point. Portal, Peter DeVore said, is a doorway into the realm, the infinite world of 11 dimensional space. Alright, well, I, I kind of assumed that was uh, what was meant, really, um, qu quite a while ago. Um, well, we've read we've read more things, so that's good. Uh, Silink was mentioned, so let's just pop back into Silink here to see if that was any kind of a hint. And apparently it wasn't. No, that's fine. I swear though, if because uh, Anders Flint mentioned the rest of human sentience, if the rest of human sentience have been entered into the uh, into the life support section, I'm going to be quite displeased. I, I do need to check. No, we're fine. We're fine. Good. Makes this round a little quicker. We'll pop to geography and central. P. Okay. No, nothing in geography. I think we might have read all that we were intended to for the time being. We'll get central processing up just in case. No, I need to see what Homer has to say. Come to Homer. I have a file ready for you. All right, Homer. You're the one calling the shots around here. All right, so there's two, two, um, one. Okay, so there's a Regent Sable entry that comes between the Regent Sable entry we read previously and the Peter, most recent Peter Devore entry, and then a subsequent Peter Devore entry. Right, what does Regent say? Or do? I'm calling it the kamikaze effect. The gods wind. And as Flint said, There's no question about it now. The equations have been solved over and over. If Peter's alive, he may try to lead a group on the migration to explore the hidden dimensions. He's alive, Regent Sable said. Don't ever doubt that. The destruction of Erebus may have bought us a little time, but it didn't do any more than that. Flint nodded and continued. If he does, and if his group is big enough, there'll be a psychic wind, so to speak, that will sweep everyone up in it. Where can he find the power? Sable asked. They were climbing the stone road up the Acropolis, toward the laminated ruins of the Parthenon, the yellowed marble columns that were all that remained of the ancient temple of Athena. A few metres away, a secretary projection drifted, nearly invisible in the bright sunlight. Flint stopped. We've been working on that, he said, and St Sable stopped a few steps later and turned to look at the scientist. And? Well, there's the anomaly out there. If he could somehow get someone near it, he'd have an anchor from the other side of the bridge. For the others, he'd have an anchor for the other side of the bridge. The anomaly would supply the power. Ah, the protector said softly. He looked out over the bowl that once held Athens, filled now with plain and carob trees, shimmering in the slight breeze. The air was clear, and far away the slopes of Mount Himatus were splashed with spring wildflowers. It's very beautiful, isn't it? He said, turning to climb once more. Flint followed, saying nothing. At the top, they paused at the entrance to the Temple of Golden Marble, open to the blue sky. You know, Sable said, I come here more and more often. 
It's not that it's beautiful, though of course it is. I think it's because it's so old, so filled with light, yet clearly implies the darkness underneath. He smiled at Flint. Do you know what I mean? Anders shook his head. No, not exactly. Never mind, then. It doesn't matter. It will all be swept away, and we, it would seem, can do nothing. If Peter has found a way to get someone to the anomaly, he'd need a starship, and then it would take years. Hmm, he's had years, hasn't he? We'll look into it, of course. Perhaps he can. we can find some record, but what good does it do? All we can do now is try to convince people not to go, and how to do that without telling them that they have the choice is going to be difficult, isn't it? Uh, but I'll get Aleph to work on it. He gestured to the secretary projection and gave his instructions. Then he turned once more and walked slowly down the length of the temple. The shadows of the columns fell across him as he walked from light to darkness. Ooh, thematic. Ooh. Um. Mm hmm. So, I mean, this is all expert. If oh, we got oh, another little thing popped in. Uh, Aleph, Aleph is Aleph Aleph. So, if Reed and not actually gonna have any aid, further agency in the story. Uh, is this is this relevant? Is this necessary information? Is this just exposition for exposition's sake? Aleph frowned at her projections. The model was incomplete. She could see that. There were unknown variables, small movements of fashion, or minute changes in the relative median age, gender distribution, leisure activity, or social stresses that she could not factor in. How do you convince the world it doesn't want to do something that it doesn't even know about yet? She made adjustments. The model shifted. Some colour subtly altered in hue here. Some curves flattened there. Overall, there was no change, though. She tried introducing a distraction, a new sport, perhaps, with a range of appeal across all ages and genders. Again, the colours changed slightly. A few curves flattened again, but the result was the same. Besides, she thought, someone would have to invent the damned sport, and it would be up to her and her team to make it popular. She ran projections on combinations of things, new foodstuffs and music, new methods of advertising along with an intensified Mozart console, food and Mozart, and a new sexual fad, a slight decrease in the mean Warren temperatures, New open spaces for wilderness fanatics stepped up mind wars. This last was heresy, of course, since population levels were still considered dangerously low, but it was worth introducing it, since she secretly considered the mind wars as the most potent social distraction in the past 75 years. But it made no difference. Something more drastic was needed, some manufactured threat that could forge a new social cohesion. OK, we're going, we're going the Watchmen route, are we? Unfortunately, most of the credible threats were gone. There were no real national boundaries any longer, so she couldn't pump up an enemy state. Atmospheric and oceanic pollution was largely a thing of the past. Diseases, genetic diseases accepted, were on the whole only the most minor of threats. People didn't even believe in them any more. Perhaps she could create something close to the truth. That often worked in the past. What threat was close to the truth, but not the truth? After all, her projections suggested that if the people of the world knew about the realm, there would be a substantial percentage in favour of exploration. In truth, she thought ruefully, the realm offered the very thing she sought to forge a social cohesion. Unfortunately, people would not see the threat of it until it was too late. The anomaly, though, it was big. It was unspeakably powerful. It was frightening. Was there any chance it was moving toward the solar system? She checked. A sphere roughly 20 light years in diameter appeared in the large hollow stage. The anomaly glowed in red and electric blue. The solar system brightened as the rest of near space dimmed. She asked for future drift. The anomaly moved slowly in relation to the solar system. Was it toward us? What was the margin of error? Could this be a threat? Chances were 14%, plus or minus 2.4% of an expansion and consequent shift in the anomaly's course. In the long run, there was a slight threat to Earth, provided certain conditions were met. Not promising, Aleph thought, 
but there might be some potential there. She went to work with renewed interest. Um, okay. Narrative 2, Peter Devore. I call it the portal, Peter said. A special kind of doorway. They were all gathered in the lab, looking at a schematic projection of the anomaly, green grid lines turning slowly showing the convoluted geometry of space in its vicinity. A point appeared near a peculiar donut-shaped eddy in the energy flux. Here, he said, this torus will be the portal. We go through there? Rover asked doubtfully. Tidal forces would pull us apart before we got through, surely. The cyan field, Peter said. It flexes to match the shape. We are part of the field. We are the field. All the portal does is supply the power, open this microspace or psi space to us. Does the portal go two ways? Shem asked, and everyone laughed. <laughs> before Peter could answer, a woman stuck her head into the room. There's a hover vehicle overhead, she announced. Thatcher and five others. They must have opened the crevasse up top, Peter said. Let's go meet them. Later, they sat in the small refectory. Thatcher, who had brought new supplies, food and the Pico electronic circuits Peter had asked for, told them about the rebuilding of McMurdo, now complete, and the careful genetic programming that had gone into the new circuits Peter, along with a team of ant engineers, had designed. All fibre optic communications were established with Psyche, and the research. I wondered when they were going to get fibre optic cable, and the research was moved swiftly toward its goal. They talked about the new heat exchangers set into the volcanic core of Mount Erebus. Titus was showing great promise as an interpersonal coordinator, and had already led a large exploration group to a seldom visited area in the Transantarctic Mountains, where new insights into the Pangaea biosphere were already coming to light. No one mentioned Laird or the others who had died in the particle beam attack. Any word on what Protector Sable is doing? Peter asked. It's not likely he'll be trying anything direct again, but he must be up to something. We have no hard intelligence on it, but our simulations suggest he must be trying to parallel your research. He'll try to block it, but they're far behind, Peter, and they don't have the will to understand what you're doing. Their attitude is negative, you know, and that will slow him down. Keep an eye on them anyway. He's not going to sit still. We're watching. Thatcher assured him. Okay, another, another little tidbit. When they were alone, Peter said, we may need Tithus's skills. The portal won't open for an individual, or even a small group. It's going to take a coordinated effort. How many? Thatcher asked. His eyes observed Peter keenly out of a broad face that hadn't aged at all, only seemed a little heavier, a little broader. Peter leaned back and stretched his long arms, cracking the joints. I'm not sure. We haven't fully determined the threshold levels yet. Ideally, we'd like to be able to go through singly, but our theory hasn't worked out so precisely. The circuits you've grown for us are good, the best we can do, uh, but we can't. But they can't calibrate fine enough for even a few people. It would seem that we need to at least 10,000, perhaps more, perhaps a lot more. 10,000? That would be tricky. Trickier than you think. The field is made up of each individual field, but they must all mesh in the right pattern. There are formidable problems, problems of relationship, of knowledge of each other, of involvement of social construct. Each person must be in contact with all the others with at least the intensity that I meet with Wanda. Uh, okay. I can channel through to her, but the others have to follow. That can only happen if families, and extended families at that, are arranged in the right pattern. Thatcher grinned. I see what you mean. Titus may be the man for the job. He's fourth generation ant. He's adapted to the harshest environment on the planet. And he's related to half the people in Antarctica. He's not afraid of anything. I'll send him over. Peter nodded. Thanks, Thatcher. He grasped Thatcher's arm as the ant stood to leave. We were close, Thatcher. A couple of years at the most. I thought they meant they were like, you know, 
uh, intellect. Um, we must have a com we must have we must have committed people, well organized and committed. What we do now determines the future of the human race and the universe. Can we grow up enough to inherit what is our birthright, or will we fade away in mind wars and stagnation? Let's finish the job, Thatcher said. It's the only way we'll find out. Okay. So it's kind of, yeah, it's basically tending to progress versus conservatism, isn't it? Which is interesting. Intriguing. Alright, so I guess the question is still were what the result is, whether Read and Sable deploys some kind of countermeasure and everything goes badly, or whether the, um, the attempt goes through but or again fails and, and goes badly so the the human species ends rather than migrates or whether they just you know migrate and are happy floating around in 11 dimensional space in however that works um maybe we'll find out next time the, the only way to know for sure is to join me when we won't once again return to portal thank you for your company um and until next time take care bye bye